Good evening, viewers, and welcome to the first edition of this special life program called Embracing Progress. My name is Tracy Liverpool, and this evening in the studios, as customarily, we have the Honorable Minister within the Finance Ministry, Bishop Juan Agil. And joining him tonight is Mr. Brentnell Evans. Mr. Evans is Guyana's Consulate General to the United States of America. Gentlemen, welcome to the program and thank you for being here this evening. Good evening to you, Tracy, and to our viewers, and thanks for hosting us. Okay. Tonight, our discussions will be focused primarily on the upcoming elections, which is set for May 11. Now, elections is less than a month away, and all parties contesting the polls are in election mode. Uh, Bishop Agile. Last Sunday, the PPPC would have held their rally in the Linden community that would have been at the Luke and Penn Square in Wisma. Now, it saw the attendance of His Excellency President Donald Ramatar, as well as Prime Ministerial Candidate Ms. Harper, as well as other executives of the People Progressive Party Civic, including yourself. Tell me, Bishop, how would you describe the response from the public at that event? Exceeding expectations. We were quite pleased and heartened that persons from across Region 10 came out in their numbers and attended that rally. We must remind ourselves that Region 10 is not Linden or Mackenzie and Wisma. Okay. We had people from the Burbies River that took their boats down to Kokwani, joined buses at Kokwani, and came all the way down. We had people from 47 and 58 miles, and Mabura and Great Falls. We had persons from Malali and Muratario who took their boats. We had people from up the Demerara River um, that came, and then we had persons from Wisma as well as Linden. We did have some support from our comrades on the highway um, Kairuni, Silver Hill, uh, Moblissa, um, Yarokabra, and I think as far as Kurukuru, we had some of our comrades who indicated that they were coming. They took their buses and they came and they supported us. Okay. But like I announced at the beginning of the rally, we didn't have a motorcade of 153 vehicles that came from Georgetown. So anybody who saw buses was because the, uh, of the, the, the gra geography of Region 10. People couldn't walk and come to the rally, so they had to come from buses. The people from the mines, they had to come with their buses. The people from Bamia had to come with their buses. The people from Spikeland had to come with their buses. The people from uh, Industrial Area and Retrieve, and the people who came from Block 22 and all the rest of it, they had to take buses and come, or cars and, and, and come. Okay. And uh, we were quite, um, satisfied with the response. Uh, what was quite remarkable is that since we started setting up uh, our stage and our public address system on the Saturday evening, mm -hmm. there was this steady stream of persons who were asking for jerseys. So jerseys distribution started from since the Saturday People were coming into the party office uh, at the five corner asking for their jerseys. Lindeners were coming for their jerseys, and many of them, we saw them in their PPP Civic jerseys boldly coming out. And for us, that was quite uh, a feat. It was quite something to see that more and more Lindeners are becoming bolder and bolder in supporting the PPPC. It's like the message we've been carrying um, in our public meetings, emancipate yourself from mental slavery, uh, make the right choice. But also from sitting on the stage as the chairperson of that rally, and many of us saw that, as the place started to get darker, 5.30, you can see in the distance hundreds of persons who didn't have on jerseys, who were normally attired in their normal clothing, who were standing there 
listening to the message. And I want to make this point to Tracy. Any person who was there or objectively look at the tape, when Elizabeth Harper spoke, there was absolute silence from that mass assembly of people to listen to what she had to say. And when President Donald Ramatar unveiled that vision for Guyana, it was like if everything had come to a halt, there was hardly any movement, the crowd was disciplined and very respectful, and it displayed to the people of Linden and Region 10 the character of this community. It is not what people think it is. We saw a display of high level of discipline. Of course, you would have seen even the presentations that came uh, from the podium were all very disciplined. Of course, Dr. Luncheon was a darling, and, and I, I hope that you can be able to uh, replay that. Uh, Prime Minister Samuel Hines made that passionate ap appeal. Minister Robson-Ben outlined government's role in saving bauxite. And then, of course, we had our new candidates to the list. Uh, Dr. Gregory Harris and Ms. Pam Sawyers Rambaran out of Kokwani, who made that famous statement, I ain't drinking black tea anymore. <laughs> the energy that was present, and by the way, we didn't have no dancing, we didn't have no bands, we didn't have no hype, but we had lots of energy. And you know why we did it that way? We didn't want to have a crowd that came because of stage attractions. We wanted to get a, 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 an assessment of what is the reality in Linden and Region 10 as it relates to the work that we would have been doing here over the last several years. And certainly, our rally on Sunday evening was testimony to the fact that more and more people in Region 10, and I did make a a jive that they should go to new GPC and buy Nutrifus because they're getting nervous because a lot of people did not believe that what took place there on Sunday would have happened. It was awesome. Okay, so Mr. Minister, would, would you say you were surprised from the response of... No, I was not surprised because, because I worked for it. A lot of persons are of the view that it, they wouldn't see so much supporters at... I was not the surprised. Region. I've been okay. speaking across Linden. I've been working the ground. I've been meeting in communities, and I know that Lindeners are emancipating themselves from mental slavery. The people of Region 10 have recognized they've always given the PNC, now the APNU, the majority of their votes, and they have nothing to show for them. And in as much as the people of Linden and Region 10 did not vote in the majority for the PPP, we still have something to show what we would have done in an area where we did not enjoy the electoral majority. Okay, Bishop, uh, you would have mentioned that you'd also be chairing um, several community meetings. Now, tell me what was the response or how is that progressing? We just came from a place in Silvertown. I hate to call it by the name that they refer to it in uh, Linden. It's called Buck Hill. I, I don't know of the other, other name of it. Okay. Uh, but I, I hate to use that name because it sounds a little derogatory. Mm -hmm. But we just came from there. We're one of our younger candidates, Charles Ramson, along with my colleague here, uh, Consul General Mr. Evans, spoke. And Mr. Charles Ramson took an hour and 20 minutes to articulate a case to those that were gathered. Not one person left or moved. The young people and everybody sat there, the women, they came out in the verandas, they were on the streets, and they listened. And that has been the trend of our public meetings. Tomorrow afternoon, we're going to be in front of the McKenzie Post Office in the vicinity of the Len uh, building. And Dr. Luncheon, Dr. Roger Luncheon, will be joining myself. And we will be putting our case again to Lindeners. And we continue. We will go into the Demerara River, like I promised. We will be up the Mabura 57, uh, 50, 47, 58 miles on Saturday. We will be in Kokwani and Aichuni. We're going to be in the, uh, the Burbis River in every village, in every nook and cranny. And you know, 
I think right now, Lindeners must appreciate, since President Jack, uh, Ramatar would have announced the date for elections, we've been all over Linden. We're doing 55 public meetings, 55 public meetings. Where is the APNU, PNC? They don't believe that they have to go to the people and put their case because they believe they own the people. And in many instances, they can't go because their record don't allow them to go. The communities will not allow them to go. That is why when we started our public meetings and we started putting our case to the people of Linden and Region 10, what we had were elements associated with the PNC, APNU, who were coming to destroy the impact of that message. And what we also see playing out here in Linden and the Region 10 in this campaign is the psychological warfare. The psychological warfare. In preparation for the AP and new AFC rally, they put up their flags. We didn't trouble, we didn't interfere. In preparation for our rally, we put up our billboard at Millie's hideout, which was destroyed. We put up our flags. And as if to say, the PPP don't have a right to put up flags. The APNU has now divorced the AFC because all you're seeing now is APNU flags. Wherever we went and we put up our flags, it affected them that they now have these huge APNU flags seeming to fly to cover the fact that the PPP flags were put up pre in preparation for a rally. But I want to remind all Lindeners, flags don't win elections. Votes win elections. So you could try to create that psychological uh, image that a Linden is APNU town. Young people, pensioners, women, men, real people of Linden and Region 10 are making the choice to, st to stay with the PPPC because in determining the future that you don't know, you have to look what is the track record of the past. And when you look at the track record of the PPPC as compared to the track record of the PNC, the wise choice of the people of Linden and Region 10 is to stay with the PPPC knowing that they have had a solid past and they are promising even a better future to bring about modernization, transformation, and new waves of prosperity to Guyana. All right, thank you, Bishop Edgel. Council Evans, what is your opening statement? Yes, um, there's a statement, you know, there is a saying, an aphorism, uh, that you can't serve the people if you don't love them. Guyana today is experiencing its golden age. This is the this is what our forebears hoped for, longed for, dreamed of. If coffee could come back from the grave and see what his sons and daughters have done, he would be struck with awe. Dr. Chedi Jagon, before he passed, was very distressed about building of infrastructure in Guyana. He thought of ways of doing it, but found it extremely difficult. And so he set about seeking debt relief. We went around the world asking for debt relief so Guyana could have a chance to develop. And now today, geniuses like Dr. Barry Jabbeer, Dr. Ashton Sun, Bishop Eche, Gail Teixeira, Raja Lonchon, 
these minds were able to process ideas and in some way unlock the code for Guyana's development. It is the PPP civic that has led Guyana into this new millennium, a millennium that offers great opportunities. The world has become a marketplace and the Guyana government had to find a way of bringing value to that marketplace so that this country can become uh, a rich country and able to bring it, create a better livelihood for its people. But working against this development is a dangerous philosophy. The historian Dr. Walter Rodney At one point, I think it, in 1980, sometime in the 1980s, was very disturbed by this particular philosophy. And he called the uh, leader of the PNC a gorilla. It was not a nice term to call a leader of a country. But Dr. Walter Rodney was not really focusing on the man himself, he was focusing on, focusing on the philosophy of the PNC, which has become so dangerous and which have led to the loss of young lives. Young men had lost their lives because they were trying to win freedom in this country. He had no freedom under the PNC. Guyana was a dictatorship. There was no free elections in Guyana. But the struggle by progressive groups and the People's Progressive Party was able to turn the tide around. And now we are living in what I call the golden age. My God, look at these houses that are going up. Guyanese never had the privilege of living in such, such wealth, such abundance, such affluence. I am stunned by the affluence of Guyanese. And it's magnificent. The homes that Guyanese live in surpass those of the diaspora in New York. Surpasses those of the diaspora in New York. And the people in the diaspora are stunned. They can't believe it. And many of them have applied for lands in Guyana, applied to, to, to acquire a home, build a home in Guyana, and they're making use of that opportunity. But what saddens me, what really saddens me, is the leadership of Lyndon. I grew up, I was born here in Mackenzie, and I grew up at Mackenzie, at Wisdom. When my father moved from, moved from Mackenzie in 1954, Mackenzie had lights. Everybody wanted to have electricity. Wisma had no lights. And young men from Mackenzie accepted the bauxite company's uh, proposal to build homes at Wisma. And young men went over to Wisma and they built two, 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 two communities, Silvertown and Silver City. No electricity. From 1954, we went over there in 1954. My father was one of those who took a house over there at Wisma. No electricity. And they had to stay without electricity until the 1970s. No protests. These people are pioneers. Why is it their children? Their children cannot bear a sacrifice of paying an increase in electricity and seek to destroy a township. Their forebears left electricity, went into a place that had no electricity, and developed two communities, Silvertown, Silver City. And I am stunned to see the disastrous leadership, particularly at the regional level. The regional chairman is a leader uh, to create opportunities for the young people 
in this community. What about the children? Don't you love the children? You're going to take away by deal from the children. Education, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to be a part of a protest. You're leading a community, and you want this community to compete with other townships in Guyana, compete with other townships in the Caribbean, and take such a backward step. But it's not only a backward step. It is a malignant, some kind of malignancy to hold up the leadership in this region. And it has led to disaster. Record my own records. Records of myself at the Bauxite Company. My God, they destroy all these records. You're going to destroy the Kindline complex which carries the records of so many workers, men who made sacrifice for so many years to this community and this country. Records of the great trade unionists like Mr. Vobby. Uh, the history of these guys are gone. Great men, great leaders. The guy mine training department was the core of producing fine leaders. I would say that it's the guy mine training department as well as the guy mine industrial relations department helped to mold me in such a way that I could take up a position abroad. And I've been there now for over 20 years. Had I not had that background, I don't think I could have made it. And what has become of our respect, respect for each other, our love for each other. We live in a golden age, but since we have arrived at it, we take it for granted. Why should we take that for granted? And destroying our community, but what saddens me and almost brought me to tears is um, when I read that the children of, of uh, one night, the school is gone. What kind of human beings do we have running this community? What kind of men have taken over this community? No respect for law and order. Challenging the authority of the police who are responsible for providing a civic virtue for this region. No respect for the commandant. No respect for the heads of police stations. Putting a police station under siege. What kind of human beings run in this place? And that is why I want to appeal to all the people in this community. You cannot take away idea from the children. There's pe the people who are running this community now, their forebears never did this to them. They were able to go to school, they were able to go to high school, they were able to get a college education. Why deny the children? Why deny these children the right? to study in an environment conducive to great learning. There's a great philosopher by the name of Earl Nightingale, and this is what he said. He said, um, in the, in the bark of the soul, in the, in the bark of the, of, uh, in the bark of each human being's soul, in the bark of every child's soul lies a reclining master. All you need to do is wake him. Schools is what wake this genius within us. There's a protest in town, the first person to protect the institutions of this society is the regional administration. The regional chairman is supposed to protect these children, institutions of learning, 
hospitals. You block how people to block a bridge. How will the sick get to the hospital? You hear the sick? Sick people, how will they get there? How will nurses get to work? You stop the boats from running. People living in a state of fear. What kind of human beings is this? And that is why Dr. Rodney called their philosophy the guerrilla philosophy. And no community need leaders like that. No community lead, need leaders like that. And so I want to ask everyone in this community of Linden, we cannot continue to make steps down the ladder of success. We must make the step up. We need people to take us up there. We have investors. You have, to con you have to create an environment where people will love to have investors coming and create jobs. You don't condemn the investor. You have to make him happy and comfortable. In America, in America, particularly in the American South, there's a Negro spiritual, a great philosophy comes from a Negro spiritual which they teach young white entrepreneurs. And this, the words of the spiritual says, it is not my mother, it is not my father. It is not my brother, nor my sister, but me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It is not the government. It is not the ministers, but it is us. It is us and the kind of philosophy we have. The books you don't read will hurt you. We have a great library here in Linden. And one day I stood in front of that library, watching to see what was happening. And people are just walking past walking past, driving past. Everything in that library is free. The great American civil rights activist, James Baldwin, grew up in Harlem in dire poverty. And to lift himself, no college education, no high school education, and at a point in time, he told himself he may not be able to make it, but he wanted to become a writer. How could you become a writer? You got no college education. And so he turned to the library. Turned to the library, reading and reading and writing down the ideas that he get from various books, compiling the various ideas. And Baldwin became one of the greatest, greatest speakers for civil rights in America. One of the finest. I've, I've had the privilege of hearing Baldwin debate a man by the name of Buckley. And the debate was, did America advance at the expense of the Negro? And Baldwin was defending that. Baldwin was defending that, that point and saying, yes, America developed at the expense of the Negro. And, and the other gentleman was arguing and saying, no, but let me tell you, I have never heard anyone reason like that. Idea is the essence of life. You've got to have idea. Children should not be denied the right to an education. Children should not suffer because of some difference we have with electricity. The the regional administration is supposed to protect all our institutions, and they didn't do that. Now look at the disaster. Then the regional, the, the, the regional chairman, along with others, came to New York. They came to New York and produced and, 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 and explained the situation, not just to the people in New York, but they went to the churches. They went into God's house and told those people that they were going to build back the school. And collected money. And collected money to do that. 
In God's house, they collected money. And we, we have to find out where the money is now. And now we have to ask ourselves. We, I'm shocked when I read an article in the papers which says the mayor has appointed someone to investigate what happened to the money. This, how could they do this to people? But it, it would be useful for us to announce, use this program to announce, the One Mile School is being rebuilt by the government of Guyana. It's almost completed to the tune of $170 million. And we would have rebuilt One Mile School while other parts of this country have not gotten a school for the first time. There are a lot of communities that are waiting to have their own school for the first time. And One Mile had a school which was burned down. And the government, this same PVPC government, where 80% of Lindeners voted against in the last election, where we did not enjoy electoral majority in Linden, we still turned around and provided an environment for the children to learn by rebuilding the One Mile School. So Tracy, it, it's something that we need to talk about. It's something we need to look about. So when, when we look at the policies of the People's Progressive Party civic government, it is one of love. Mm -hmm. Love for children, love for people. And so um, I, I, I would really like to ask the people of this region, do not allow yourselves to be influenced by people with malignant philosophies. Read the good books. Those of you young people who want to be involved in politics, make sure you read Roger Gibbons' Decline and Fall of the Roman Empire. If you want to be in government, make sure you have read Cicero on government. If you want to get a fine education, read Tom Fielding's, Tom Jones, read Charles Dickens, David Copperfield, read Charles Dickens, A Tale of Two Cities. You would learn so much. You would learn so much. But the education should make you a good human being. But what I cannot still understand why is it the young men and women in this society challenge the law and order of this society? A law and order was created to provide a civic virtue, to protect us, protect us from danger. You could always call on the police for help when you're in trouble. You could always call on the police for help in trouble. And yet, when they came, told you to move from that bridge, you would not carry out that instruction. In other words, you're saying, we do not believe in justice. When justice comes and say move, you have to move. You cannot obstruct another man. You cannot trample on another man's rights for your rights. And that is why John Locke wrote treatises on liberty. Read John Locke's treatises on liberty and see that you cannot trample on another man's right, prevent another man from free movement in this, in this society. You cannot do that. And I am one with an agreement with the police for taking action. They have to defend the rights of the majority of people in this country. Okay, thank you so much, Consul Evans. Let us move on to talk a bit about development. I'll ask Bishop Edgel to address this next question. Um, last Tuesday at the Nominations Day, which was held at City Hall, His Excellency President Donald Ramatar, he would have announced that the PPPC is aiming to win a majority in the National Assembly, as this would allow the party to advance programs, policies, and legislation which will in turn improve the lives of all Guyanese. Mr. Minister, could you develop on some of these programs and policies? Well, Tracy, the, the, these are things that are known. 
In the last three years, we sought to carry Guyana into that new wave of modernization. Because of that one seat majority or that dictatorship of one in parliament, we were unable to move ahead with the Amalia Falls Hydroelectric Program, the specialty hospital, expansion of the Chedi Jagan um, International Airport, and so many other transformative uh, projects that we were going. Now we are talking about deep water harbor. We are talking in this term that we are going to be elected on May 11, exploring new opportunities for hydroelectricity in the upper mass with the Brazilians, the paving of the Linden to Let Them Road, the deep water harbor for the movement of goods and services, the putting in of an information communication park at Providence, which financing is already secured, the moving of a bypass road through from Mocha All Link to Ogle to make traffic between the Ogle Airport and the Tamiri Airport uh, cut out all of that tra travel time. We're talking here about bridging the Quarantine River in conjunction with the Suriname government. We're talking here about expanding the tourism sector, introducing um, new waves of development in the ICT sector, not only in terms of call centers. We're talking here about e-governance, where people could be able to apply for their birth certificates, their passports, pay their taxes, access government services all online. We have already brought in the cable from Brazil. It had some problems you would have seen in today's news that re remedial work on that cable is being done. We have put in the backbone infrastructure from Crabroot Creek to um, Charity. Here in Linden, you have one of those towers to be able to bring the necessary connectivity. So when we talk about waves of development and we are putting in place the infrastructure, it is to jumpstart. It is to create the enabling environment for job creation. So what the young people of Linden are asking for, jobs. But not just jobs, but high paying jobs, well paying jobs. These new growth streams, tourism is a dynamic growth stream. Tomorrow morning, we are opening, we're cutting the ribbon for the opening of the Marriott Hotel. And just to remind Lindeners, when we said we will build the Marriott Hotel, the AFC and the APNU moved a motion in Parliament to block government from building the Marriott Hotel. Why did they block us from building the Marriott Hotel? One of their main finances, Mr. Robert Badal, is the owner of the Pegasus Hotel. He's now out speaking in the uh, Anna, Anna Regina AP and New Rally, cursing the government out. He's now come out openly, but we always knew he's a client of Mr. Ramzatan, and he's an AP and new financier. And they figured that if you build the Marriott Hotel, you will interfere with the business of the Pegasus Hotel. What kind of legislators and leaders will hold a country back to facilitate the prosperity of a business, of a financier and a friend. Grenada, St. Lucia, Anguilla, St. Martin, all those small islands, St. Kitts, you know why they're booming? One sector, tourism. In Guyana, we have a special brand of tourism, eco-tourism, and we're gonna to continue to foster that. We're gonna continue to open up the, uh, uh, new lands for agriculture. 99.5% of our forestry is still intact. The 0.5% is what is being used, utilized right now for mining and forestry. And we still have lots of other avenues in the area of forestry. And here in Region 10, forestry is an important sector we will continue to be able to create that in in environment to ensure that our local people get access to the land, they're able to do their forest, forestry work, and they'll be able to have value added, which will be creating the, 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 the new jobs. So while we are looking at the big things in terms of infrastructure, we are also looking at the things that will affect communities. 
and not only things that will affect communities but families and individuals and that is coming out in our manifesto in, in, in what we have planned for Guyana and we are seeing it unfold. Okay, thank you very much Mr. Minister. You're watching the first edition of our Embracing Progress program and joining me we have the Honorable Minister within the Ministry of Finance, Mr. Bishop Egil and Mr. Bretnall Evans. And this part of our program will open the phone line so viewers will have an opportunity to call and put forward possible positive suggestions that is and ask positive questions as well. We'll take our first Caller, yes. Good night. Good evening. Um, I was listening to the program on several weeks. As time goes by, with the different progress that what is supposed to be very peaceful in there. My concern is that if the government is in, is in power, right, they have to do whatever work they have to do to develop this country. It's not that they have to say that this is what's going on. If, if this is to be done, the road is to be built, let them build it. Let me give you one instance. Me, the minister, goes to the NCN office every week to meet the people. Henceforth, do he pass by the Woodcock House to see how that road is so deteriorated? It is so sad that I live going to the Kobaka area and have to have going with the bus there is very, very, very troublesome. These are things we need to develop for later. If I empower, I demand, I will ensure that things be done how it's supposed to be done. Not that when I get, you know, going or, or where the next thing we got to do, what we got to do to develop our country. That's my contribution. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Tracy, I appreciate the caller raising that issue. Okay. Obviously, the caller is not aware that there are specific responsibilities that are given to regional administrations and there are specific responsibilities that are given to the government. It is the responsibility of the regional administration to take care of roads. The government declared, takes care of what is called declared public roads. Like the road coming in from Millie's Hideout and all the rest of it, that is what, what is called a declared public road. The Ministry of Public Works is responsible for that. Internal roads are to be taken care of by the main city council, where it falls within the municipality, and the other roads are to be taken care of by the regional democratic council. Now, what it would appear that happens in Linden is that the main city council, as well as the regional democratic council, neglects to do their job and the people of Linden believe it is the government's responsibility to do all the things that the region is doing. Now we are having an election. The people of Linden voted who they wanted to govern Linden. That caller and other callers must be able to judge them on May 11 by saying, I put you there for the last three years, but look at the road. You didn't fix it. Let them come to the people of Linden and say why they didn't fix it. It is the government that would have had to come in over and over and over to make interventions that should, and do things that should have been done by the RDC and the main city council. Former President Jagbio, on Sunday afternoon at the rally, reminded people that when he came to Linden, Burnham Drive, when you stick here to get a tractor to pull you out, it's under his presidency that he did over Burnham Drive. He did it over. The Winifred Graskin Road, it is this administration that would have done it. So yes, I do pass and I see the roads in front of Wutuka heading to the mines that is in a deplorable condition. And the people in the mines have made representation to me. And right now, we have a greater in the mines fixing the road in the mines because they have been suffering for bad roads. So we have not neglected our task. Where we have had to come in, we've had to make a way, find a way to come in and get it fixed. But people cannot continue to excuse the fact 
that the people that they elected to govern them have neglected to do the things that they should have done to make the lives of people better. And the big question here is on May 11, will you vote again for those same people, for them to continue to do the same thing? Because Region 10 has always been governed by the PNC. Always. So nobody in Linden can say that you didn't have the opportunity to develop Region 10. It has always been on the, the PNC you now calling themselves APNU. Let them show what they would have done in the last three years. These elections in 2015 is about what has happened in this country in the last three years. PNC people don't want you to talk about their 28 years in government. They say don't go back so far because they're the only people who are ashamed of their history. They have changed their name so many times and so on. We're not going to go back to the 28 years. Let's just talk about the last three years. What do you have to show for the last three years? The only thing that Mr. Sharma Solomon and the regional administration got to show for the last three years is that they shut off the bridge and caused Guyana to suffer. They chased away investors. Three young men died who should have never died. And Linden has received a cloud of darkness over it where people are saying, I'm mixing and meddling with Linden. That's the only thing that they have to show for the last three years. But, they could, but the people of Linden could correct it. Like we said tonight at one of our public meetings, give us a chance to govern Linden. If we don't do well, you could correct it. All you have to do is vote us out. But you have never given us a chance to govern Linden. You've given the PNC a chance all the time. What have they done? Don't you think it's time that you say, okay, for the past how many years since we have the regional system, the PNC has been governing Linden, you see how it is. Give the PPPC a chance to govern Linden. If we don't develop Linden, if we don't deliver to you in Linden, it is something that you could correct. Five years time, vote us out, kick us out, but give us a chance and let us show you what we will do for Linden and Region 10 in the next five years. All right, thank you, Bishop. We'll take a lot of call. Hi, good evening. Good evening. Yes, good night, Minister. Good evening, and sir. The members of the panel, I would like to ask a quick question to Bishop Edgell. Um, the issue, and Minister Edgell, mind, I'm asking you this question on the ground that I know you are a minister in the Christian faith, mm -hmm. um, and I heard you uh, talk about, you know, in the most negative form when the APNU and the AFC merged. Now as a Christian, I believe that we should embrace unity. And the mere fact we that... We should not embrace deception though, because that's not unity. That's so deception. The mere fact that these two political parties came together... They joined together, it's not unity. Joining they together they is not unity. Together, well, you can't have uni national unity when, Bishop, when the majority they, of Guyanese are not involved. And they That's my first question. I thought you would have you know, you would have been the one to stay quiet while the other ones, you know, made a noise about it. Anyhow, my second question is this. Um, most of the other countries around the world that had elections, you know, the people that voted while they were doing good, whatever we might say bad, they changed government for a reason. Mm -hmm. So that people would know that the power, mm -hmm. the people have the power. The United States changed government. They took out the Republicans, they put in the Democrats. Trinidad changed government by appellation. Mm -hmm. The UK, Nigeria recently, Suriname. What is wrong with that? I know. Can we have change? Okay, let's give you the key. The government did good, but we want to try something new. Young people do not know anybody else, like myself, other than the people. We want to try something you did you did in 2011 you tried something different in 2011 you give you give you give the APNU and the AFC an opportunity to approve and disapprove and you have seen how they have damaged the country in the last three years and you saw what they did with that power from day one, he said in Parliament, he was 
The president did not sign bills that were unconstitutional and illegal. Anyhow, my last question to you is this. The only person, the president and his campaign trail in Linden, and I want to know how you felt about this, sitting on the same stage with him. Mm -hmm. He said the only person that changed his name is that criminal thieves and robbers. Yes, and that's a fact. And you had a name changed. I never had a name changed. That's, you are, you I are, never had a name changed, sir. And you can't hide behind a, telev a television and a radio program to accuse me of having a name change. I could produce my birth certificate. I was born one Anthony Edgil. Forget about the propaganda that you're hearing. I've never had a name change. Good evening, caller. Go ahead. Hello. Hello. Yes, good, he good evening. Yes, good I uh, have a nice thing to say, Dylan. Uh, very well. Um, I just wanted to break something that um, the other guy was talking. He said that electricity was brought to Wisma in the 70s. I came to Lyndon in 1954, and I can assure you that the electricity comes to Wisma around 1961 and, uh, and not 1974, as you can see. It was 10 a kilowatt at Wismo and 10 a kilowatt at McKenzie. That's what I have to say. Thank you, Carla. Mr. Evans, do you care to respond to that? Well, when I look back at the uh 1961, uh, I was still um, uh, attending high school. Um, we hadn't any electricity. We hadn't, I don't know where he got that from. I don't know where he got his information from. But the point that I was really making is that we didn't make a fuss about electricity. What the people were interested in is development, development. and starting as pioneers from scratch. Okay from nothing. They went to Wismo, no roads, no electricity, and they built something. We could do better than that. All right. I think we could. All right, thank you, Mr. Evans. In the interest of time, viewers will take two calls and some brief closing remarks. Good evening. Yes, we lost that. Okay. Good evening. Go ahead. Yes, Hello? good evening, go good ahead. Good evening. I just calling um, in connection with the the bills that you said during the APNU and the AFC passed in Parliament. It's not um, when the AFC passed the bill, the president did not sign up on the bill. Because it was unconstitutional it was and illegal. You must start the truth. It was unconstitutional, you. sir. Tell people the truth on TV. That's what we're telling them the truth, but you don't want to hear the truth. I don't know about that. I don't know about that, sir. I was never a part of the PNC. I was never a part of the toggery of the PNC, sir. Never was a part. Give us, give us a chance to govern Linden, and people like you will be silenced permanently. Because you will see the progress that has been made. I don't know what you're talking about that we give away locks to the Indian people. It's a sad thing when you it's a sad thing when you believe your own propaganda. Because every other region, every other region in Guyana gets monies to do their capital works at the same time at the passage of the appropriation bill, which is the budget. When the budget is read and debated and passed, every, every region in this country gets their money to spend at the same time. But it would seem that it's only Linden got a problem. It's only Linden have a problem for some reason. And, and you know, a bad workman quarrels with the tools. Okay, we'll take our final call and wrap up the program. Good evening, caller. 
Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Um, no, what I want to say, right, is that we want to change in our country, change the government to see what somebody else can do. Mm. Right? One, if it wasn't for election, we would have seen you on TV. And every time you come up is, here, is that true, sir? Yes, Are you yes. speaking the truth? Yes. Well, I've been on television in Linden yes. even when there was no elections in the last two years, sir. Every Where Wednesday. were you? Every Wednesday. Yeah, I've been every here every Wednesday. week. Wednesday. I've been here every week for the last two years. Mr. Edel, for a bishop, you're a liar bishop. Well, you can, you can hide behind a television screen and be, 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 be abusive by calling me a liar, but you are a stranger to the truth. You are using this program to spread your poison, your hate, and your venom. That's what you're using this program to do. Well, I'll take some brief closing remarks in the interest of time, beginning with Mr. Evans, briefly. Um, I just want to repeat that you can't serve the people if you don't, you don't love them. And I don't think that the regional administration here in London has shown any love for the people, but to lead our people down the road of destruction. Why should they do this? I don't really, can't, I can't fathom how they could do something like that. But we could always recuperate. We have to find ways to find solutions to problem. Violence is never a solution. One must always try to have dialogue with the other. But this APNU opposition from 1964 to today has not shown any kind of maturity. Once you do not share their views, you hope for ostracization and they hate you. But we of the People's Progressive Party, we don't hate. We believe in love. And we love our people and we love the people of Linda. Okay. I have grown up here all my life. True enough, I spent many years abroad, but my heart is here. But what I don't know, uh, where I can forget, that when I tried to enter Linden while I was in Guyana in 2012, I couldn't get to my own home at 50 Sunflower Street, Silver City. I couldn't get home. I had to leave this country, return to the United States with a sad heart. Thank you. All right, thank you very much, Mr. Evans. Bishop Edgel, what are your closing statements? Tonight's program, um, Tracy, and the tone of some of the callers reflects two things. How gullible people of Linden are as it relates to misinformation. How gullible and readily they accept misinformation. They're how willing they are to reject the truth when it is spoken and how abusive they can get to the messenger when they can't fault the message. We are bringing a message to the people of Region 10. What is the attack? The messenger. The message that we are bringing is give us a chance and we will show you that we will make Linden better. And I want to deal finally with this deception of saying that this coalition is a sanction of God and Christians must accept it because it is not. It is not. If you want to talk about a coalition, look at the coalition's list. It does not represent ethnic diversity. It does not represent religious diversity. It does not re reflect gender balance. As a matter of fact, the AP and UAFC had to add 20 names to their list today to correct it. If not, they were going to be disqualified. They did not satisfy the criteria of putting in enough women. 
And even though they put in another 20 women's names, they still left out Vanessa Kisun again. The AFC, AP, and U coalition listen to their messages. Who they going to jail? What are they going to do? It is a campaign of hate and bitterness. And the same caller who's saying that as a Christian, I should have embraced the fact that they have unity. I want to know if he's a Christian and he's embracing that campaign of hate, bitterness, recrimination, vindictiveness, spite, and revenge. And I am saying it is my firm conviction the best team to continue to lead Guyana and to bring about the waves of transformation and modernization is the PPPC. You may not vote for us, but come May 11, the majority of Guyanese will, and you will have to sit again for another five years and watch it unfold in front of your eyes because we will win these elections because the people recognize that while we are not perfect, we have been mostly right. And our heart and our interest is for Guyana and the people of Guyana. So thank you very much, Tracy. Okay, thank you, gentlemen, for joining me this evening. Viewers, thank you for tuning in. This was, you are watching the first edition of the Embracing Progress program. Do join us next Wednesday for another edition. I've been the moderator.